Hi, this is Kevin Stoda, and I'm welcoming you back to On the Porch. Um, this is the Kevin Stoda channel. Um, I'm going to read a little bit more right now from um, Jim Hightower's Lowdown, May 2020. It, uh, it takes a simple and clear look at the world um, that we've been raised or misraised in for the last hmm, 70 years almost. I'll read from Moving Forward, uh, Jim Hightower, Lowdown. It seems like only yesterday that the corporate-backed Democratic Party hierarchy, spooked by the rising popularity of grassroots Democrats' big change proposals, rose at, as one to caricature progressive insurgents like Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez as radical spawn of Marx. I think it's just February, right? if not Beelzebub himself. Oh wait, it was only yesterday. In February and March 2020 primaries, a cabal of these backroom political geniuses rushed out a coordinated campaign screeching that impending doom awaits the Democratic Party if it actually campaigned on Democratic ideas like Medicare for all, paid sick leave, universal basic income, and expanded unemployment aid. Too bold, they wailed, too socialist sounding, too scary. Clueless billionaire Mike Bloomberg actually hurled the communism smear at Bernie. Bernie, go slow with Joe, they warbled. Biden was portrayed as a safe choice, a trusted lifelong insider who will excite voters with his unexciting steady-as-she-goes conventionality. And then Cub Bluey. In a flash, conventionality started coughing, gasping, and dying. Almost instantly, the public was clamoring for the very remedies that Biden and co. had so loudly decried as extremists. As FDR caught Herbert Hoover in 1932, in times of widespread troubles, ordinary folks begin to understand that the status quo is Latin for the mess we are all in. That's when they open up to non-establishment thinking, seeking solutions potent enough to see, uh, to meet the challenge. Since war... Uh, Wall Street hucksters crashed our economy back in 2008. It's been increasingly clear that the American majority of middle class and poor families is being crushed by decisions imposed by plutocratic elites, creating an untenable, ever-widening level of inequality. That's where the big extremist proposals being put forth by progressive forces come from, not from ideology, but from extreme human need. America's un inequality crisis, now made much more obvious, pressing and painful by Trump's mishandling of the corona pandemic, cannot be addressed with small ball political thinking and tinkering and legalistic tweets to failed uh, systems. The point is that whatever Joe Biden and his old guard contingent do or fail to do, this is no time for low downers to back off. We must begin, must become even more aggressively progressive. Americans must be insistent on popular agenda of bold structural change. Unfinished business? Yeah. Let's start with our proven winners. While Sanders, Warren, and other Democratic presidential contenders who offered bold ideas didn't win the party's nomination, their ideas clearly did. Populist proposals dominated the election debates, and as polls and ballots questions show, they're now mainstream with majority backing, including surprisingly some Republican support. A wealth tax, tax, yes, people are for it. Green jobs and infrastructure, yes, we need them now. Uh, forgiveness, student debt, long overdue. Broadband equality for rural areas and poor neighborhoods, let's do it now. Medicare for all, it's now favored by most Americans. M4A had another nine point leap in support since the COVID-19 interruption. Medicare for all. I'll say that again. Wealth tax, yes. Green jobs and infrastructures, yes. Uh, forgive students' debts, yes. Broadband equality for rural areas and poor neighborhoods, let's do it. And Medicare for all, it's now favored by most Americans. Okay, such popular programs stand as a ready-made new deal. Fair deal action agenda for America's work a day majority. The time is right, the need is obvious, and uh, the people are ready to enact it now and put it to work. All right, this is what we need, and we are demanding already, and we need to keep demanding. We need to uh, elect better people to get this through. Pressing business. To get 
from here to there, we need to go on the offensive with comprehensive democracy initiative to make the people's voices supreme over corporate money. There's a long list of necessary reforms from such fundamental steps as overturning the Supreme Court's democracy, crushing Citizens United edict, to procedural innovations such as an instant running, runoff voting. But the impact of each reform and the overarching purpose of the whole initiative is to reverse the ugly voter suppression scheme that contaminates today's electoral structure, process, and results. It's time to go right at the nefariousness of the suppressors with a program broad, proudly affirming the vote as a fundamental right, a joyous civil action that must be made as open, welcoming, and easy as possible encouraging maximum democratic participation. Anything that interferes with this is contemptible and yes, un-American. Yes, I'm reading from Jim Hightower's um, Lowdown and I'll continue now. Uh, so anything that interferes with our voting is not only contemptible, it's un-American. This is not a get it when we can bit of political business. The pandemic created a five alarm emergency that threatens both our votes and our lives. In an act of blunt force, plutocracy, thuggery, shameful even by their usual corrupt standards, the Trump GOP cabal has mounted a vast voter suppression ploy to cut off enactment of a simple electoral reform that is crucial in this pandemic year, voting by mail. As they successfully did in last month's Wisconsin election, the Trumpites or Trumpeteers are getting their legislative and judicial partisans to require in-person voting for nearly all people in states that might have decisive numbers of Democratic voters. This scheme intentionally pits people's health against their core political rights. Rather than encourage the safe, secure, and sane use of mail in ballots, the method His Highness Trump actually uses in Florida's March election. Republicans and corporatist lobbies are demanding that voters and poll workers violate public health standards, crowd into small balloting areas, and wait in long lines for hours. Expose yourself and family to more COVID-19 horrors or give up your vote. It's your choice, they're saying. It's sick, but it's Trump, and even uh, he concedes that slashing Democratic turnout is his only only path to re-election at this point. Now, that doesn't mean we can't have new business as well. New business, there is no shortage of big ideas and innovations coming from progressive thinkers, organizers, and others throughout the country. Uh, they're offering not just theories, but pragmatic proven concepts that, are, that will advance society's democratic possibilities and help implement our egalitarian ideals for the first time in decades. Here are three alternatives to the anti-democratic exploitive ethic of today's corporate system. And I'll read them first. One, a cooperative commonwealth we need to develop. Number two, rights for nature. And number three, corralling corporate greed. The first one, a cooperative commonwealth, this tried and true method of organizing an economy has recently been spreading and thriving anew. More than 65,000 energetic member-owned enterprises are engaged in banking, media, brew clubs, electric power, childcare, high techs, cleaning services, engineering, every level of food economy, uh, ride services, healthcare, manufacturing, home building, the arts, accounting, funeral service, and well, everything. So cooperative. Stemming from America's historic populist movement of the 1870s, cooperatives eliminate hierarchical corporate structure and control. I go to a credit union with the bank, where do you go? Embodying a genuinely democratic notion of capitalism. They are owned and democratically run by members who might be workers, consumers, suppliers, local community groups, or some combination of these grassroots people. The most empowering aspect of the cooperative organization is the realization by participants that they can achieve anything that a corporate uh, corporation can and do it with the burdens of an average, without the averageness of executive class exercise and authoritarian, uh, narrow, profit-driven, self-serving control over everyone else. Number two was the rights for nature. Uh, some hunters have recurring nightmares. They are fleeing, shouting, look out, the rabbits have guns. That would make a hunt a bit more sporting, wouldn't you think? 
Well, there is a fast developing movement around the world to arm the rabbits, i.e. wildlife, trees, waterways, and the rest of nature with intrinsic, intrinsic legal rights, allowing them to fight for their well-being against the corporate plunderers, polluters, and profiteers. The rights of nature movement recognize the Earth's living ecosystem, of which we humans are a part, are not mere property and, yeah, the creations of nature are not mere property of man, but have their own fundamental rights to healthy existence. Under this code, if natural objects suffer direct and deliberate harm, including by corporate persons, they have standing right to sue in a court to stop the perpetrators. Citizens or public agencies can bring charges against the perps on behalf of a river, forest, or any species that is harmed. The important structure change is that rather than having to prove that the industrial damage to nature is causing a direct harm to the people, as the legal system now requires, violators can be sued for the harm that they do to nature itself. City charter amendments and laws in dozens of U.S. localities, including already Colorado, Florida, Minnesota, New Mexico, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, as well as laws in Ecuador, New Zealand, and Sweden, have been written to uh, implement such a law time for Amer all of America to join and we have to rethink our relationship with nature and our responsibilities for it. Number three again is corralling corporate greed. Here's a plan for from and who better Elizabeth Warren to require a little less avarice and arrogance from the ruling corporate class. Her accountability capitalism act starts with the necessary step of mandating that corporate bosses serve more than their own financial interests Corporations with more than a billion bucks a year in revenue would need national charter obligating them to run the company to specifically benefit not just big shareholders, the super rich, but also workers, customers, suppliers, and communities. It's a socially uh, wholesome model already advocated by such firms as Ben and & Jerry's and Patagonia. To help enforce a golden rule mentality at the top, Warren's new public charter would require 40% of the corporate board members be elected by rank and file employees uh, and there'd be stock buybacks and other executive suite, uh, suite profiteering would be curbed. Corporate uh, political expenditure must be approved by at least 75% of the shareholders and board members before the money could be used in campaign or for lobbying. Uh, this is all within our reach, America. This is what um, Jim Hightower says, and I agree. A progressive America grounded in a majority, egalitarian value of fairness, justice, and opportunities for all can be ours only if we demand it, articulate it, organize for it, and go get it. Despite the sour, regressive example of Trump, Republicans, and the status quo recalcitrance of today's smug establishment, ideas do matter in politics. In fact, in downtimes, new, bold, and uh, positive uh, ways are needed to pull us up and out of the trouble we're in um, and bring us hope for that matter. In coming issues, uh, Jim Hightower plans to talk more about this, but in the meantime, it's time to act. Get out and get involved. I don't know what that means today in our COVID world, but uh, it might mean just touching people online, speaking truth to power, speaking truth to your friends, family, but not harshly. Do it in a way that will uh, eventually win them over. Okay, uh, let's change this country in 2020. Let's change the world. We need to save it from the worst of ourselves. This is Kevin Stoda uh, with my friend Jim Hightower's magazine. <laughs> and uh, he wants to get us off the precipice. And I want to get you off the precipice too. This is the Kevin Stoda channel. Please give me your comments and pass this on. All right, take care.